Hi, it's Rachel. So we're moving through these seals, breaking open the tomb. And he said in verse, and I do, again, I want to say is that God's truth is so deep. Okay, and we are going to be learning for eternity. These are aspects of, again, a layers upon layer upon layer. And that's what you see when you're when you're reading. But the layers support one another and they interact with one another, they affect one another, but they are in a sense different pictures. This is one picture that I'm showing with these seals, okay? So the fifth seal, so remember you've gone through this transformation till the end, to the last horse that is starting that greenish color. It's like the leaves are coming out on the fig tree. The fig trees have been restored. They're, they're starting to show forth. What do you see in the fifth seal? Okay. When he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of those who've been slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. What were we just walking through? All of us being that being slain. And they cried with a loud voice saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, until you judge and avenge our blood on those who dwell on the earth? What this really is talking about is that, again, when you go through an understanding of being renewed and taught by the Spirit of God and a new heart, you desire all that you have gone through, okay, that you want to lay down your life the the seeking the learning the understanding the truths all that you have gained you want to lay it down for everyone else so that they may partake of your labors that's what christ did for us he gave us his spirit that we may partake of the fruit of his labor all the work that he did him coming out of going through death and understanding all that wisdom, we're partaking of his labor. We desire the same thing, that others would take part and partake of our labor. Okay, the laborers are few, but you know what? God only needs a couple. And that's why in these verses, I don't, these are talking about the coming forth of the living creatures. And there's a picture upon a picture in itself, meaning there are living creatures around the throne of God that John saw when heaven was opened. Okay, and we know that the kingdom of heaven comes within. So I don't know how many people really this entails. It could be very few. It could be more. Again, it could be layer upon layer. But eventually, we're all going to have to be recreated, and this is the process how. But that's what happens. You come to the point where now you're slain and you're waiting and you're desiring for that work to, to come forth. Okay, that reminds me of Jeremiah 31, which says, starting in verse, te verse 15, Thus says the Lord, a voice was heard in Ramah, lamentation and bitter weeping, Rachel weeping for her children, refusing to be comforted for her children because they are no more. Remember, she's brought forth her and Jacob, the tribes of Israel, and Leah. Refrain your voice from weeping. This was God's response. And your eyes from tears for your work shall be rewarded, says the Lord, and they shall come back from the land of the enemy. The land of the enemy is that he's taken over people's souls. He is the spirit that sons of disobedience, that disobedient spirit, that rebellious spirit is governing people. That is why it's the weeping. Okay, but your work, your work will be rewarded. This is what they're talking about when you avenge our blood on those who dwell on the earth. Let our work, our blood, what we poured out, we poured out that we understand in gaining that new spirit, let that be manifested in the earth. Verse 11, Then a white robe was given to each of them, and it was said to them that they should rest a little while longer until both the number of their fellow servants and their brethren 
who would be killed as they were was completed. How were they killed? By the word of God and for the testimony which they held. The word slays you. It slays your dead flesh. Okay, the sixth seal. I looked when he opened the sixth seal and behold, and again, remember these are the stages. So you get to this point where you feel like you have died to everything and yet you're waiting. How much longer, God, until your spirit, basically until this tomb is poured open and your spirit comes out until the Holy of Holies is opened, until the doors are opened and that spirit pours out. It's able to be given until the inheritance of the firstborn is able to be given. Okay, so I looked when he opened the sixth seal and behold, there was a great earthquake and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair and the moon became like blood. And the stars of heaven fell to the earth as a fig tree drops its late figs when it is shaken by a mighty wind. Then the sky receded as a scroll was rolled up and every mountain and island was moved out of its place. This is talking about you come to that point where you're slain and you desire that all should experience the fruit of your labors. That's what they're wanting. Okay? So what happens? This is when the sun and the moon change to where we become the Son of God starts moving in His fullness in us. And that is why the sun became black as set cloth of hair because it's becoming a part of us. And the moon became like blood. Moon is a reflection of the flesh. Okay, it's no longer the sun and moon separate. It's no longer God and the reflection of Him, His Son, all that it is separate. It's now moving in. Remember, we're the temple. There in the end in Revelation, you see there was no more sun and moon because the, the Lamb was its light. It says that in Revelation 21, 23. This is, right, because it says the city had no need of the sun or of the moon to shine in it for the glory of God illuminated it. The Lamb is its light. This is the trans, this is the moving in part. That's why great earthquake. It's just like that caterpillar. It's, imagine your skin splitting open, okay? And it's an incredible creation, an incredible thing to see. But that's what's going to happen with us. These dead tombs, it's like they're going to start to split open. Remember that the great earthquake is what opened up the tombs, the graves, and the people came out? The earthquake were going to be, it's going to quake because he's moving in in sackcloth of hair. Us, we've been mourning these and these hairy garments. We're ready to come him in and like bust forth. So the stars of heaven fell to the earth. That is the spirit. It's like we've been sitting in the heavenlies with Christ. We've been separated from the earth. The spirit and the physical, in a sense, have been separate but now it's like the spirit is infusing the physical that's the spirit of god infusing this earth that is christ being revealed in this earth and that's what it's doing as they're falling to the earth they're becoming a part of the earth okay and again the fig tree that you see here shaken by mighty wind by that spirit of god the sky receded as a scroll and is rolled up Okay, it's being, heaven is being exposed. Heaven and earth are being joined together. Heaven comes out of, from with us. The kingdom of heaven comes from within. Okay, it is being exposed. And when this happens, everything is shifting. Because remember, everything's going to come underneath the righteous reign. God is now reigning. Okay, so now when evil is no longer reigning, and now it's God's righteous standard, what you're going to see is what you see in verse 15. And the kings of the earth, the great men, the rich men, the commanders, the mighty men, every slave and every free man hid themselves in the caves and in the rocks of the mountains. 
and said to the mountains and the rocks, Fall on us, hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath has come, who is able to stand? This is what they're experiencing is the shame. Remember, God is spirit. The Lamb is truth. It is the word going out. It is light going out. And when light starts to reveal the darkness, you know what the darkness and people in it want to do? They want to go hide. They don't want to be exposed. They don't want their shame to be exposed. They don't want their evil works to be exposed. But that's what's going to happen. And it talks about that throughout the Bible, about how that's what's going to be happening at the end. Those that are exalted are going to be humbled. And those that are humbled are going to be exalted. That there's going to be this shame that people are going to experience because that shame is leading to repentance. They're not going to be able to run away from it. And trust me, shame is the last emotion that you want to be feel, feeling. That's why it's so important to go through this process now before everything's just revealed. You know, the books are open, the hearts are exposed. All what you've been doing is being exposed. If your heart has been seeking after God and desiring to love perfectly, when you have nothing to hide. You will stay naked and you will not be ashamed. But if you have this dark, wicked heart, mind, all of this, and that starts to be exposed, they're going to want to hide themselves. But you cannot run away from the truth. You can't run away from the light. Because once light comes, it enlightens the darkness. It just does. There's no hiding from the light. And I will continue on on the next video with the last seal.